Hello basketball coaches and basketball players, my name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training and today I'm going to talk to you about some of my top 5 plays for swing guards in basketball. So hello everyone, my name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training. If you're new to this channel, on this channel I show you basketball plays, drills, and skills. So if you like that stuff, hit that like button and subscribe. I have over 1700 videos for you to go check out, so yeah, go go do that after this video. Anyways, so today I'm going to talk to you about swing guard basketball plays. Now first of all, if you don't know what a swing guard is, a swing guard is the terminology we use up here in most of North America, and basically what that means it's a player who can play the point guard and the shooting guard position and for example the Toronto Raptors they use swing guards for example Kyle Lowry can be technically classified as a swing guard because he can play off the ball really really well but he is also a point guard another player is Fred Van Fleet he barely ever touches the ball as a point guard and when he does he is fantastic he is probably one of the most consistent ball handlers in the NBA However, he is also a ridiculously, stupidly good three-point shooter, and that is why they don't really have him touching the ball all too much as a point guard. However, there are plays that if you have a point guard who can shoot ridiculously well, well, these are five that you might like. I was also a swing guard in my later years. I can sort of handle the ball pretty darn well, but I am a fantastic shooter. So these plays are near and dear to my heart because I was a swing guard. I was a center before that. It's a very long story. I might make a video about my history someday soon, but we'll see. Anyways, let's get down to the clipboard and let's check these out. Okay, so here we have the 1-4 basketball defense, the high 1-4. The, the high is, well, along the free throw line extended. Low is, well, whoops, is along the baseline. Uh, basically, in this play, what we are going to try and do is free up player 1 for a 3-point shot. But he is going to be the point guard who is, well, dribbling the ball up the court. So what you would normally have, if you have a true swing guard, somebody who can sort of handle the ball really well, but also ridiculously well at three-point shooting, you would want to have a backup player who is also like that as well. So generally, these two players would both be swing guards. So we will, in this play, be making plays for those two players to get open shots. So what we will do at first is have player two. He is going to have a screen from player four and he's going to be cutting along the top of the key. Meanwhile, player five is going to be back screening for player three. Now, player three is going to use that screen. Player four, after he screens, is going to turn around and screen again for player three. And player three is going to receive that ball. Now, at this time, what we will have is player five setting one more back screen on player two. He is going to go and cut out to this far wing, and he may be open for a three-point shot. But now, what we will also have is player two. Two, doing a dribble handoff after that with player three. Now, player five is going to now set a screen for player one. Player one is going to go down to this corner. Player two is going to dribble over, do a lob pass over to player one. And this may be a three-point shot over on player one. Or this could also lead to an assist with player five rolling off. This could either be an assist here or when player one gets that ball, it could be passed to player five. Now that last play worked works really well against a man-to-man -man defense. So this play will inherently be really good against a 2-3 zone. So let me load in the 2-3 zone. Okay, so we have the 2-3 zone. Most likely they're going to be playing up just like so. And basically... We're going to be having player one in single coverage here, player two playing the, the entry lane, player three playing the entry lane or the passing lane, and then we're going to be having player four kind of guarding both of these players, and player five watching the key, also watching player five. We don't want any high post cuts on defense, but we're not showing you the defense, we're showing you the offense. So what we are going to try and do here is get these two players open for either an assist or for a shot. Now, what we are going to do 
is very simple. We're going to go and pass over to player 3, and player 2 is going to go and cut towards the rim. Now, when he's cutting towards the rim, player 5 will play out, and player 4 will cover. So that means that he's probably not going to be open. However, if he's not open, what we want is for now player 2 to pop back out and set a screen for player 3. At the same time, we're going to have player 4 popping over to the high post. So now player 5 needs to watch the baseline roll because player 3 is going to be going this way. But he's also watching the high post. We're also going to be having player 1 popping over. And because player 3 is going to be fighting through, player 1 is going to be watching both player 4 and player 1 and player 2 is going to be rolling towards the rim. We may have an open layup for player 2 if player 5 is overplaying player 4. And we also may have a, an open three-point shot for player one, who is now going to be open because player one may not be totally guarding over because of player four. If player five didn't overplay, player one might be guarding player four. Player three already fought through, so now he has to recover. At the same time, if player five is on this side of player two, Player 2 could get in front. This could be a lob. It depends on how tall player 5 is and how good of the post player player 2 is. There's a lot of different factors there. However, what we have here is a possible 3-point shot, a possible layup, and a possible 3-point shot here. Now, this next play is really good against a man-to-man -man defense, so I have loaded in the man-to-man -man defense. And what we are going to do here is have player 2 run up, and this is going to be a dribble handoff to player 2. At this same time, we're going to be having player 5 popping up. This is going to be a back screen on player 1. He could be on this side or that side, depending on if the team likes to switch or not. We'll just stick him in the middle and hope for the best right now. And player 2 is going to continue through. This could be a 3-point shot. What we will be having as well is player 4 popping out because we want to have this key wide open for player 1 to cut down. And this is going to be a possible lob pass to player 1 for the alley-oop or dunk or for a layup or for just anything really. But this is a huge opportunity for player 1. But we also have a big opportunity for player 2 to jack up a 3-point shot as well. Because of all of this kerfuffle, I guess we could call it over there, this does leave these two players open majority of the time. Now, in our fourth play, this is going to be really working well against any zone defense, but also a man-to-man -man defense. This is a fantastic play. So this has two different parts. So with a man-to-man -man defense, let me show you what you can do, and I'll show you the play again but against a zone defense. So basically what we will have here is first, we're gonna have player three pop over and most likely player three red is gonna be between him and the rim. And we're gonna call for S2. This is an S play. I like to run the S plays. If you don't know what the S plays are, I just might make a video soon. I have a whole list of plays I call the S plays because it's all about shooting threes. If you have a three-point shooting team, this play, they, this play is definitely for you. Basically, S2. In this case, uh, we can call him Sean, and we can say SS or S Sean or something. S means shoot. Basically, he's going to run the baseline, pop out, Player one is going to dribble to this side, pass, and shot. So it's going to look like this. Run along the baseline. Player two is going to get hung up somewhere. Player two is going to pop out. And player one is going to pass him the ball for the three-point shot. Now, let me show you what this play looks like against a zone defense. Okay, so against a zone defense, we have a double team up top. And we have three, whoops, against a 2-3 zone, we're going to have three players down low. Uh, I'll also show you this really quickly against a 3-2 zone defense as well. But what we will have is a screen here, a screen here, and a screen here. And player two is going to curl over here. He's going to dribble out of the double team, and this is going to be a three-point shot. Now, this uh, the second option for this is for player two to go and set the screen up for player one. And we're still doing nice, solid, strong screens. Now, if they fight through, screen on the other side. Fight through, screen on the other side. Whatever. And then this could be a three-point shot or player two can roll towards the rim. This can be a floater. Or if player five pops out, this could be a bounce pass or a lob to player four for, well, the, 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 
layup. Now, you only have three seconds in the key, so this whole screening action has to be done super quickly, especially if the referee is really actually counting. Uh, up here in Canada, they barely ever count unless the opposing coach is yelling uh, about three in the key. So, uh, yeah, that that happens. Uh, there's there's ways around everything, I guess, right? Okay, let me show you the 3-2 zone. So the 3-2 zone, we have, well, these four offensive players the same. We have two in the bottom, three up top for defense. And what we will have is a screen up here a screen here and well a screen here player two is going to pop out player one is going to dribble into a possible double team this is going to be a pass over to player two for well the three point shot now after the screen what we can also look at is a possible uh, two instead of popping out to here if we've ran this a few times and player five is going to cheat this could be a lob down to player four or if player five likes to play on this uh, kind of on this side and player four isn't able to match up to him size wise so you can't get the post up uh, player two can curl around set a screen on this side of player one player one can use that for the shot or player two can then roll towards the rim and get a nice easy floater or mid-range shot. So there's a few different options there against the 3-2 zone off defense. I almost said offense. Okay, so this fifth and final basketball play that is going to get our swing guards open for assists or shots. Um, this is going to be only good against the man-to-man -man defense. And what we are trying to do here is get player one open for a three-point shot down here now this is also an overload offense which is great against the zone defense as well but against a man-to-man -man defense we take a little bit of a different angle so what we do is player one is going to pass over to player four now once that happens player three is going to back screen player one and player one is going to cut towards the rim he's going to be asking for the ball but do not pass him the ball we don't want him to get the ball in the key this is going to be a double team and a turnover very very quickly and he is probably going to be short so player five needs to set a screen on his own man or line up a screen on player one depending on what happens here and player one is going to pop out over here for a nice easy layup now what's going to happen player two red is going to be probably playing pretty damn deep player two needs to come down on the weak side and get that rebound in case player one misses remember and this is a great note for every single player if a shot comes from this side you have a very high likelihood of the ball bouncing over on this side and vice versa if the shot comes up on this side you have a very high likelihood of the ball going here so when you're trying to crash the boards, run in from the other angle from where it's being shot from. Now, those are some really great five basketball plays that are amazing for swing guards in basketball. I hope that you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe, and well, I do post new videos every single day on Tuesdays and Thursdays. However, I do post individual basketball training skills and drills and stuff like that. So I'll see you guys again tomorrow for another daily basketball video.